Hi everyone. So this is going to be a very simple lesson on how to get started as someone who wants to write reviews of things, be they books, movies, music, even you know something like a technology or, or a Broadway show, really anything. And so the question is when you're writing an opinion piece that's really reviewing the quality of something, how do we do it in a way that is kind of both opinionated but still containing some level of authority, right? So the way I want to get into this is to say there's kind of a, a common thing that gets said, which, you know, I'm going to sound like an awful person here, um, and that thing is, is that everyone has an opinion and everyone opinion, everyone's opinion matters. And I think that that's a nice idea and it's something that probably should be told to, to children um, but it's a little bit more complicated like that than that and so so let's kind of break down what it means when we say everyone's opinion matters it matters that everyone have a right to provide their perspective right so we don't want to to live in a society that says only certain people can have an opinion it matters that when we are trying to learn about something that we listen to many different opinions it matters that people feel empowered to develop and share their voice with the world, right? That they have the opportunity to think about what they um, care about, what their values are, and to, to try and write about that. However, your right to an opinion does not mean that your opinion itself has rights, particularly if it is untruthful, vague, or, or irrelevant. So what I mean by that is just because you have a right to an opinion, doesn't mean that you can all of a sudden start writing, let's say, you know, reviews of a book and your opinion be considered just as authoritative as somebody else who's been writing reviews of books professionally for years. Now, that doesn't mean that their opinion is automatically more relevant, automatically correct but it means that they might have a perspective that they've developed professionally where they're looking at things, looking for things, and focusing on things that make for good reviews. So <clears throat> even though everyone should have an opinion, um, we should not try to just say when we're writing a, a review, we just have to write what we think and therefore it's good because we deserve to have an opinion. Um, we want to write in a way that inspires confidence in the reader that the opinion we're sharing is more than just a really unique individual perspective that might be completely random and really ultimately unrelated to the work in question. So I think for example of a film there's lots of different complicated questions that come when you're reviewing movies. So should the film critic judge a movie based on what the movie aims to achieve or based on what people generally expect a good film to achieve? So what does that mean? It means an animated movie, one that's clearly a children's movie, it might be really silly, unbelievable, childish when you're watching it, but the movie is intended to be silly, unbelievable, and childish in all the best ways because children will really respond to that. And this is a movie for children. So when you're writing a review, do you write it from the perspective of that child? Do you think, does this really work for children, the intended audience? Um, if you were watching a dramatic movie, clearly intended for adults, and it feels really silly, unbelievable, and childish, those same qualities might be really wrong for that dramatic movie. So do you judge things based on what they intend to do? Is a movie good because it does what it intends to do? Or can an animated children's movie be just as well made, just as profound and thought-provoking as a dramatic filmed, you know, live-action movie for adults. And we judge them on the same qualities. Now that's not to mean, you know, that you judge them 
by determining how dramatic the children's movie is. But the children's movie could be kind of just so well thought out, well produced, that it's clearly on the level of something that, you know, might win an Oscar or something like that. I'm not saying it should be one way or another, but what I'm saying is opinion writing is more complicated than just sharing what you think. And so again, your opinion matters. But if it's not a well thought out opinion, if it's not an opinion that's informed by, you know, really careful um, consideration of the type of thing that you're reviewing and all of the questions that it raises to review something, then while it's great that you have an opinion, your opinion might not matter as much as somebody who is honing their opinion writing skills professionally, thoughtfully, and carefully. So how do we do that? That's what makes this a really simple lesson. Um, the thing I would say to put at the center of what you do is precision. Lots of opinions are really vague. And, you know, when you just think about the language we use to describe what we like, what we don't like in conversation, it's often so vague as to be useless. What did you think of that? I thought it was really good. Good. What was really good? Um, the characters were really good. Okay, thanks. What made the characters really good? I just thought that they were all really well done. Okay, what does it mean to be well done? Well, you know, they were kind of entertaining and enjoyable and and fun and nice to watch. Okay, and what does it mean to be entertaining and enjoyable and fun and nice to watch? All of these words we have for good things ultimately break down as being kind of generic praise. And same thing with negativity, right? So to be a good reviewer, you want to hone in on detail. Good reviewers observe details that the average audience member might miss. That's why professional critics kind of have the, the edge on you because they're constantly, if you're a film critic, you watch tons of movies a week. And so you get trained to notice more. So you want to train yourself to notice more. Good critics draw our attention to these details, large or small, through their opinion writing. So the advice for today, the simple, very clear lesson is keep a notebook. I think it should be a real notebook because particularly if, if you're going to movies and, and watching them, it's going to be difficult for you to have a, a digital notebook, you know, like a, an app on your phone because you really shouldn't have your phone out in a movie theater. But, you know, movies aren't the only thing to review. So if you wanted to have it on your phone while you're reading a book, while you're listening to music, like, go right ahead. There's something to be said, though, to have a, a, little, a little kind of you know, moleskin notebook that you just jot notes down in and that you use when you're, you're typing up your reviews. No matter what, have something. What, though, do you write down? How do we be precise? So here are five specific things I would say that you should do as you're reading, watching, listening, whatever. And obviously this is more tailored for art, right? So this might not make sense. Uh, if you were viewing like a new iPhone, although, you know, you, you could clearly tailor these to fit something technological. Um, but depending upon what you're reviewing, you might want to add or subtract to this list. So let's think about a book. First thing, document your emotional reactions. What are the moments, the aspects, the things that provoke a response in you? Sometimes it's hard for you to realize when you're responding right? Because it's just part of the process, but you kind of want to train yourself to stop after you feel a specific feeling like, oh, I didn't like that part, or oh, that really moved me, or, or I think it was funny, or whatever, or even just like, oh god, I'm so bored right now. So the trick is recognizing when you're reacting and then learning to write something down quick. That will jog your memory later. Uh, you don't have to answer the question of why you're reacting. Just note that you are. And that's something you can come back to later on in your reviews. Train yourself to notice patterns. So patterns, whether they're intended or not, right? So there might be a pattern in a book where characters constantly say similar lines of dialogue. And that's because the writer is not that great of a writer and they, they can't diversify their dialogue. Or it might be a pattern where you know, notice that there's an intentional kind of repeat of certain lines because there's meaning behind it. 
And so noting the patterns starts to, to show you both good things and bad things. Small details that produce big reactions. So, so sometimes you see little things that, you know, are kind of funny or are an interesting reference to something else, and they're just kind of like a one-off thing that you can, you know, have a, a small laugh at and then move on. But sometimes there are little details that keep adding up and, and show larger uh, ideas. So it might be like a small thing that a character does that you think, you know, wow, that was really interesting and I wonder why that sticks with me. Or a small kind of line of description that really stands out to you and seems poetic. That kind of links to our next thing, craft, right? So there's your experience of something, your, your enjoyment of a story. There's your reacting kind of emotionally to to being told a story, meeting characters. But then craft is kind of the behind the, he behind the scenes stuff. So how well written is it? What does it mean for something to be well written? So my example here is a microwave dinner might taste good, but hopefully we would recognize that like something made by a professional chef will taste better because they're going to be doing things you know, in the cooking process that show a higher level of skill. And that skill translates to, you know, a more uh, complex tasting experience. So what's the link between the skill and that experience? What demonstrates craftsmanship in a book? Artistry. What are the things you're noticing? Again, it could be that the dialogue is really strong, or it could be that it, they, everyone speaks the same way, because the the author doesn't know how to write from different perspectives. So note those things that stand out to you about the actual style. And then after effects. So the first four are things you're doing while you're reading. The other things are, you know, have your notebook on you at all times and you finish reading something and then like two days later you find yourself thinking about this one scene. You want to write that down because that shows you that the experience is not just in the reading of it but that it's coming back to you. And some things that you read and finish and then you don't want to think about again, well, that tells you something, right? It tells you that the work isn't really lasting and not really affecting you long term. So that's really it for today. It's just how do we start having an opinion that's more than just, you know, a generic, I have a right to an opinion, so I should be able to write this too. What gives you authority? And authority comes, yes, with experience and with doing something a lot and, you know, putting your name out there, getting published, but it also comes with doing the work to, to make yourself be in the position where you can get published, where you can get noticed. And that comes, I think, with precision and starting to have a notebook and taking good notes while you experience something.